Hello and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Today I have the honor to make um, the second bag of the month bag from I See So. It's called the Grace Bag. I love the name of this bag because I already have a faith and a hope, so why not have a grace? I need a drum sound for my jokes, I think. <laughs> um, it, this is a nice little satchel bag that comes together pretty easy. Um, what we'll need to do is get a couple of pieces of hardware, cut out our fabric, and we're going to be good to, good to go. I'm going to be making my bag out of all cotton, so I'll be able to show you tips and tricks you can use why, if you're doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm using cotton canvas and waterproof canvas for my lining and some of my exterior. I like to mix it up with a little bit of cork to have some fun. So here we go. Let me show you the pieces that we're going to need. All right. So we are going to need two D, uh, well, you can do re two rectangle rings and two D rings or two or two D rings or two circle. You pretty much have it. Uh, you have a nice open options. I'm using two rectangle rings. I'm using a tri glider. I need four purse feet, an end for the zipper. Keep in mind, if you don't have a zipper end, that is perfectly fine. The designer created a pattern piece on a pattern piece end that you can use in, in lieu or in place or just because of it. I like the way it looks. It comes together really nice. We're going to need a turn lock. I have two bridge connectors to help hold the straps down and a couple strap ends. Two for the, um, the straps in the front and two for the our crossbody straps. I have two zippers, one, two <laughs> that are handmade and a third one that is a flower just because I like to make it a little fun. I do have, I do recommend having a pair of sharp scissors or two. If you're using um, any kind of canvas or cotton like I am, I have my fray check in any areas that they're going to be holes at and you would need to grab your pattern pieces. I made sure that all my pattern pieces are connected to the actual bag that it's supposed to be. So for example, um, we have pattern piece H that has its lining pieces. There's two um, longer ones and two and four shorter ones. I have them connected to there. There's also labels you can use. So that way, when we're, as we're going through and they're like the directions say you get pattern piece G or pattern piece B, it's easier to find. I have my trusty dandy West Westcott ruler. If you've been in my videos, you know, I have such a love for these rulers. It, they are well loved and I always get more. They show the one eighth of an inch mark for each end. So it's easy to find seven eighths of an inch, five eighths, three eighths, whatever it needs to be without me thinking too hard about the math. <laughs> so I have that. Um, we're going to need marking tools, um, whatever is easier for you because I'm using canvas. I'm going to, I have a water, um, air soluble, um, marker, a Crayola marker. It washes out. That's the reason why I use it a lot. A chalk marker. And for if any of the waterproof canvas on the other side, I do have a silver marker. And from there, we are going to start beginning. You're going to need three zippers. You're going to need your zipper for your main zipper closure and two zippers that are nine inches long for the pockets. Again, there's printed labels on inside of the pattern that help tremendously. I sometimes I feel like a bag takes a long time because I do not have all the pattern pieces or labels connected to it. And you're spending quite a few time um, trying to get it all to work out. So I said, I suggest you to cut out all your fabric, interface it based off of what the pattern pieces say. A lot of the interfacing is out of the seam allowance. And then we are going to get started. We're going to first do step one, front panel assembly. With this, you're going to need um, your main piece A and main exterior and Piece B, the slip pocket, exterior, and interior. So I'm going to grab my A and I'm going to put it on the side because we're not going to use it immediately. 
I mean, you kind of do, but you kind of don't. You'll see when we get there. <laughs> and I'm going to grab my piece um, B. With this pattern piece B, you're going to need the male part of the turn lock. So I'm going to get my snips. Man, this is this is well vacuumed in. <laughs> and get the melt pieces. Okay. On the pattern piece, there is a marking where your turn lock has to be at. So I'm just going to remove the lining so that way I'm not counting that. I'm going to just grab a clip or two just to make sure everything doesn't shift while you have it in position. And I'm going to make a mark for in the center. And there it is. I'm going to put this powder piece on the side for right now. And we're going to insert the male portion. Because um, this is canvas, I'm going to do a couple steps. One, I'm going to draw where I'm going to pump, like do the, the slits. Two, I am going to You know how like when you use, I use this spray check a lot and it always gets clogged though, like always. <laughs> like I use it a lot. I like spray check. Um, I use it pretty much on a lot of things. And I like to put them on the slits before I cut them. And what I'm also going to do is grab a small piece of foam to help with the for stability for the back lock. Um, Cause I only have Shape Flex 101 on here. I don't want to, I don't want to punch her through and the, the, it just keeps tearing because there's not enough stabilization. So you can just grab like waterproof canvas or, um, foam, whatever you have available to you. And I'm going to draw the lines on this piece of foam. I'm just using a box cutter, nothing fancy. I'm going to insert the male portion. and put the prongs down this one has the prongs are not very um thick so i'm able to maneuver around it without too much chaos <laughs> now you always can put the slits in and then when we do these next parts complete it and then put it in um it's really up to you because sometimes it can mess up like your flow of putting the pieces together. So we are going to, you put the mail part in, we're gonna go on to page, the next page, and we are going to put both slip pockets, right sides together, and we are going to go up and across and down three inches. This is where my Tandy leather pen comes in really, really nice. I like to draw on the wrong side of waterproof canvas or whatever I'm usually working on to know where to stop and start with my three eighths of an inch. So that way I can try to achieve as best of my knowledge, uh, a clear pocket that doesn't look a little lopsided or cause I would go all the way up. And by drawing this, by drawing this right here, um, I'm able to know when to pivot <laughs> and that's important. All right, so I'm going to take a couple of clips and clip them right sides together, trying to align them as best I possibly can. This is why I advised a few moments ago, if you want to wait to put your, um, your mail piece in, this would be the perfect time to wait. You can slip it in right after it, whatever's easier for you. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to sew. I'm using 40 weight thread, a Mon thread that I got from Wawak. And it's it's a beige color. Um, let's see. It says it. It's number A5841. Um, this is like my, you know how like most people have like a gray or a white that's a neutral color? This, this, this kind of like tan burlap, burlap color is my favorite color to sew with. It kind of goes with everything in my eyes. I think everybody should have like a neutral color that they like. And I'm stopping at each corner that I'm supposed to go down on. And then I'm pivoting. Now, I, you may look at this pattern and be like, whoa, it's a lot of pages. But the designer, to me, is brilliant. Because she shows no more than four pictures in a page. So you really have an opportunity to look at each piece without having, like, tons of description and words. So it's a very vi visually learning, like, Pro. So I'm going to pink this. This is not necessarily in the pa pattern. Whenever I have pockets, I like to pink the corners so I can get a nice sharp turn and get it as sharp as look as I possibly can. I'm just going to pink this on the sides down to about one fourth of an inch. Do not get too close to the stitching. If you do, because we all make mistakes, just go around again like one eighth of an inch below the line that we just made. So that way it can capture the stitches that you um, missed. If it's cotton, then you can just unpick it and have at it again. That's the beauty of cotton. All right, so we're going to turn this right sides. And I'm just gonna stick my hands through and just Really give it a nice clean. I'm just gonna grab a boning tool real quick. Our bone folder. Oh, yeah, they, it's I use a lot of these tools to help with the edge. Just like a nice blunt, not sharp thing that won't poke out the corner. Will help you poke out the corners without poking through them. Okay. I'm just rolling the seam. And then we have that beauty. It looks really great. So what we're gonna do is exactly, um, we're gonna top stitch this next part down. I'm gonna put a couple of clips because the waterproof canvas is heavier than my um, cotton canvas. It wants to bow over. So I'm just putting a couple of clips there to help with the positioning so that the lining pocket, the lining piece doesn't peek through. If you want the lining piece to peek through, then peek through, it'll be perfectly okay. Just out of habit. You're gonna sew one eighth of an inch. Um, I don't have a one eighth of an inch mark on my sewing machine, but I know in between the toe of my um, foot, I is exactly one eighth of an inch. All right. Taking the sheath off my scissors. All right. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Okay, so we're going to ensure the, you're going to have to fuse the foam if you using fusible foam. I did not have fusible foam. So I'm going to machine base and then try to remove as much as bulk as I possibly can. I am using um, By Annie, and By Annie has a really great formula where um, where it just kind of like compresses down and it doesn't get too bulky. And I'm using a little bit lighter weight material so I can get away with this. So I'm just gonna machine base this really quickly to the foam. I increase my stitch length until to a four or five. So it is that I'm only going into the machine basing at like, just a little bit above one eighth, not not quite one fourth. Machine basing also is a great way to um, practice the curves of the bag. 
so you can kind of get your a feel for it. All right, we machine base that. I'm going to bring back the back the stitch length to a 3.5. Actually, I had it at a three, I think, but I'll say 3.5 because we're going to get into some a little bit thicker material. I am using a 9014 organ needle. If any if any areas get too bulky, I will try to use a hop jumper and or I'll change out my needle. That is my trick on this machine. This machine is very similar to the um, Juki QVP Mini. It just has the industrial it has the industrial um, servo motor on the other side, and other than your machine, but it it takes all the same feet, everything. All right, so we check on that. We are going to find our centers. You'll be hearing that a lot. So I like to clip everything in place. And I like to find the center and just put a small V. It will help tremendously in the long run. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make a small V at the bottom. And then I'm going to line up the V to the bottom of this V and clip. Now, if you're a double-sided tape, junkie like I am, <laughs> you can put double-sided tape like one-eighth of an inch on the sides and on the bottom and not have to use it. If you're like me and you have to use it because you don't want to poke holes, if you're using cotton, you can just put a couple of pins in it and you're fine. Um, you can use sew tights. They're um, a magnet that a lot of quilters use to help keep things in place. And there, you put the magnet above and below. Or you can, like I said, use one eighth of an inch double sided tape. It's your choice. I'm going to keep it with the eyeball. As long as I notice everything is aligned, I'm going to be fine. Now, what you want to do next is you're going to want to machine sew this on. So, what I like to do is with any pocket that's an outside pocket, I always come in at a triangle, like, in, like a, a horizontal angle. So that way, when I use this pocket, it, the stress areas are now going to be secured. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can, you've seen that one way. You can also go up, stitch across, like pivot, stitch directly across and back a few stitches and then go back up. This way it helps with the stress of that area. Because this area is most likely going to be the area that I use for my cell phone. Or candy. I like candy. <laughs> Those peach gummies get me every time. Don't forget to stay hydrated. Get a drink of your um, your choice. Right now I have ginger ale by me. Um, staying hydrating is really important. We're using materials like cotton, uh, cork, canvas, or some of you are using, you know, um, some vinyl. I cannot stress this enough. Um, these materials dry out our hands. It absorbs our mo moisture. So keeping hydrated and, uh, you know, moisturize your hands when you're done with this. <laughs> show your hands a little bit of TLC. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to go in at an angle, one, stitch off one, like one time off of a, onto the blue. And then I'm going to go straight again. And now this area is like a little bit more secure and so I'm trying to make sure my drink doesn't knock over. This area is a little bit more secure and has like you know, uh, it can help with stress. It, can, it won't just like the, the stitches won't just come off. This is coming along already really pretty. I love um, this flower with the pattern piece. If you have bigger prints, you can do some really beautiful focal prints onto the, onto the um, main body. All right. So we're going to now grab, take these strings off. Um, we're going to grab our strap pieces. So 
so many straps. There we go. This is going to be straps for your flap. Piece out. You're going to have two pieces that are, are long and two pieces that are shorter. We're going to lay the, the wrong sides up and you want to draw a line down the center. I'm going to use this air erasable pen. I like the air erasable pen because it, it does go it does go away relatively quickly. But I always tell everyone to do um, a test. I've had it where I had an air erasable pen that did not come out of cotton, and I was devastated because <laughs> I usually write notes or something like back piece strap this, and I learned quickly that it did not work. If you're using cotton, you can um, use you know. Um, a heat erasable pen but if you live in a colder area like I am today when it's 32 degrees it can reappear it has reappeared and left me devastated <laughs> I'm going to be using some well-loved um, double-sided tape I cannot find my one-fourth of an inch right now and it's driving me batty but I have a half an inch so you know everything all is well if you don't like double-sided tape because you're like hey Nova this gums up my needles you can fold it on to each other on into the center and use like hair clips to hold it in place. You can also use um, a glue and let the clips hold into place, walk away for like five minutes and let it set and not gum up your needle. Mine's, my machine gets gummed up too. I usually clean my machine after every sew. I go in there and I go through the throat plate and above the needle bar and to make sure that it does not gum up. I'm kind of used to it because I like to sew with a lot of wax canvas and sometimes in this area it, it gets gummed up. So we're going to now fold, remove the double sided tape and fold our straps onto itself. And that's good. I'm trying to see where my, if my seam rollers here. I usually like to give a a nice little roll with a seam roller. It's like ironing the, the double sided tape down. And it gives it a nice crisp look. I'll show you. I'll put this one together compared to this one on this side without being rolled. And you'll see that there is a difference. You can press it down really well with your finger. But sometimes I feel like it's just not enough pressure, if that makes sense. I love how these straps come together. They don't bulk up. See how it's curved up? This one's not, but then if you give it a little press with a seam roller, it weirdly like irons it. It's, it's really kind of weird. <laughs> I love it though. You can do this with cotton too. Um, you can use it on anything. I, the seam roller trick, the first time I seen it was actually a quilter. And the first one I seen was an all blue one with a little powder blue will. Like, I think it was powder blue with a dark will, blue will. And then they have been now coming out and bag makers have been using it. I love when we can use other references to help our sewing. Each each fabric of sewing, whether you're a shoemaker, um, hat maker, a garment maker, a quilter, um, there are so many different, a tailor, like different avenues and so many tricks that, that all these um, sewists make that we can learn along the way as well as them. And this is a great one because as much as I love quilting, I have never used a seam roller for opening seams. And I think this is genius and I, it must help quilters tremendously when they're doing paper piecing. My, my, my needs a little bit of oil. <laughs> I will oil it when we're, when, when we're done with this video. If you have anything that squeaks, don't forget to give your little um, scissors and your seam rollers a little bit of oil, a little bit of love. So that way they don't make this horrendous noise on you. <laughs> it sounds like a barrel going down. All right, so we folded everything together. We applied the double sided tape. Now we are going to um, stitch down both long edges at one eighth of an inch from the raw, from the raw center. So because these are one inch, I'm going to go in at three eighths of an inch. 
because one eighth of an inch will be three eighths of an inch in from the center. So we're going to stitch down both long center place. Oh, sorry. Place both straps on, on, on each other. That would have helped me to do that. <laughs> I apologize. So I'm going to do this, grab a couple clips. So we're going to place one nine inch strip onto the, the longer one. Then we're going to sew down three eighths of an inch. Now you can use double sided tape here in the middle as well to help everything not shift. Oh, and surprise, surprise, the one fourth of an inch makes an appearance. So I would put it in the middle of your nine inch strap. Press down, make sure that tape adheres because sometimes it wants to act a little finicky and just lay it down on top all right and i'm going to do the same thing on this side grab a piece of tape This, I got this tape off of Amazon and I am not friends with it. It just, the paper sometimes does not come off. I mean, there, it's not a real problem, but you know, it'd be annoying when you're like, yeah, one strip. Wait, no, I can't. <laughs> so we're going to stitch down all the way down at three eighths of an inch on both sides. Now you can do this kind of like chain stitching and I will show you how I do it. I'm going to find my three eighths of an inch on here because my machine has one fourth of an inch and it goes straight to a half of an inch. So I'm going to put a seam guide at the three eighths of an inch and I'm going to take this and go three eighths of an inch on both sides. I'm just going to bring the other one on the other side right by it and then I, I am back stitching one stitch at the beginning and end of each strip okay and I'm going to just hop over a few stitches put my needle down and then I'm going to go over to the 3 8 again sewing for a convention I like do a lot of batch sewing so this is like a trick that I always do it it helps I don't know if it saves time or thread it just I feel like it does it may not <laughs> Now, if you're also like, hey, Nova, I'm not the best with straight stitching, you can use like a Tandy leather pen and um, draw your three eighths of an inch on both sides. And that can help that can help you out tremendously. All right. I'm going to separate these and trimming up the threads. OK, now top stitch along the long edges, one eighth of an inch on, on the sides. Let's see. No, 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 don't top stitch. We're going to stop stitch these edges that came right here on one eighth of an inch. We're going to stitch this around onto the bag. Much on like, like the re repeating the post. So I'm going to take Sorry, I'm just double checking my, I need to put my, um, papers like, like I leave, like, like a book, like an open book thing. So that way it's easier for me to, um, 
see. All right, so we're gonna, right here where this starts and ends, we're going to top stitch. And if you want to, I, you can make a little mark on your tandy leather where to start so that way you're not, if you don't trust your, um, your uh, bobbin. <laughs> it, I have a, sometimes it like it's a complete perfect stitch on the bobbin. And other times I'm like, what did I do? The tension was so off. So I'm gonna just back stitch a little bit and one eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna go across and I'm going to so one eighth of an inch this way. So we're basically making like, these are a nice flat pieces. So it's going to be thicker on the, um, on the bottom portion, but just, you only have to go through two layers on the top. So it's nice. It'll be easier, easy make. So that way it's not too bulky. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. I like to back stitch one or two stitches. It's up to you how many stitches you would like to do. Some, you know, it, it's all about what, what makes you feel secure in your bag. Okay, so we are done with the straps right now. We're gonna do work on also the cross body straps and um, the handle piece, piece K too. apologize um my i have an older dog uh she's a she's a little bit older and um every time she can hear a butterfly flap their wings and she starts going off so let's continue um we are we're putting together the strap now it's two sides you can do two tones um if you've been looking for a new way to put the strap together this is really awesome we're doing it very similar to what we did the straps this with this um adjustable strap. We're going to sew down three eighths of an inch on both sides, or you can do one eighth of an inch from the center, which winds up being three eighths of an inch. And then we're going to sew one eighth of an inch on both sides. There's a reason why I like this way. There's a reason why I like this way a lot. Um, is because sometimes when we do the fold over, you'll see this side that has like the double and then this side that doesn't. And this is a new way you can do a nice strap without um, with it looking like cohesive and even. So we have our, I'm gonna put our adjustable strap away. We're gonna now work on also piece, piece K, which are the handle straps. So you have two pieces and then you folded it in on itself, just like we did with the straps. And we're going to go down. Um, I'm going to go down one fourth of an inch on each side and then one eighth. Just so it, the, the, the handles have like the same look as the straps and the adjustable strap. I'm like that. I like everything to look like aligned and cohesive. And double, practicing double lines is really awesome for top stitching. And it looks really, I like the way it looks. It has a real polished look to it. This is why you always remove your tails so that they don't get hot. And I'm gonna go down a few stitches and the top of this is my uh, my top exterior, 
and also the blue exterior. I wanted it to be two-toned because I didn't have enough to do the strap. But let me see if I can get these threads out of the stitching. There we go. So we have our handle. Now um, on the handle piece, and it's noted also in the pattern that you can have your handle two sizes. There is a little longer one at 11 inch and there's this one at nine inches. I made the bag, I promise you, but I'm trying to find it for you guys. I was trying to find it for you guys and I can't find it. It just, it disappeared. I don't know where it is. So what I'm going to do, watch it be upstairs. Um, so what I liked was the nine inch handle. It I felt like it looked really proportional with the bag, but there's so many of the testers that did it with the 11 inch. It looks so fantastic. So it's all about personal preference. If you want a small handle or do you want a larger handle that maybe you could stick your wrist or arm underneath and hold the bag that way as well. We're going to do the same thing with the connectors. We're going to go down 3 eighths of inch on both sides. And if you're doing this, I'm using um, waterproof canvas. Waterproof canvas doesn't have a real bias or a stretch, so these will work. But what I also will do is I will put a piece of twill tape or a piece of ribbon in between to give it some extra stability without having any extra bulk. Okay. So we're going to prep our rectangle rings. So there are marks, we're gonna prep them. We're gonna repeat the same steps that we basically did with the 3 eighths of an inch. And now we're gonna start working on our flap. I'm gonna put these to the side in my bin so that way um, I will be able to locate them later. <laughs> we're gonna go, I'm gonna get our flap piece. Our flat piece has um, something I really, this pattern piece is super important. You're going to have the position of your strap handles where you need to like stop the sewing and where you're going to put your strap in, whether you're doing the slit or the um, have, using the connectors. This piece is very important to interface right. I'm hoping my dogs don't um, bark because I'm using canvas. I use Decaville and I stopped where the Decaville light is supposed to stop. And then I still use a little bit of Shape Flex 101 on the corner because canvas has a very loose weft and warp compared to cotton. And I didn't want it to stretch or um, fray faster. So I have that. But you need to be cognizant about not having any kind of, um, any kind of, I'm sorry, uh, I did Delicoville light here where the stop line is. And then I put, I hope if I move this, you can see it better. I put a strip of um, Shape Flex 101 or So Fuse um, so that way that this canvas won't stretch or like start coming unweaving. So it just helps a lot. But I need you to be cognizant about this area. This area is super important because when we start to sew it into the back pocket, we're going to be sewing three eighths of an inch of this in. And if this has deck of a light or it has heavier material, it's going to basically fold on itself. And you want to have as much as bulk, uh, as, sorry, not as much, as least bulk as you possibly can. So just pay attention to that area. Um, in the pattern, it does tell you to where you to um, remove excess, the excesses, just go for it. Um, it. It's something that the tester group had to be really cognizant about because you don't want to have an extremely bulky area in that area. So we're going to, I'm going to take the, interior piece and we're going to lay the, the, the piece facing side up. Okay. We stabilized it. We are going to transfer the positions of the handles. I'm going to take this. I spoke to the designer because there's no way of really getting around this. So you need to draw things out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to draw the box. I'm using an air, air soluble pen. And then what we need to do is draw one fourth of an inch from the outside of the bag, like shown in the um, photos. And I'm just going to draw a little quick line. 
Okay, I'm going to remove this pattern piece real quickly. We are going to take our strap that we just put away to make sure that it wasn't in the way. Watch it like mysteriously disappear. <laughs> That's how it happens though. Okay, so we're going to take, I'm going to take some double sided tape, one fourth of an inch. I'm just going to put it on the ends. This helps tremendously if you're using vinyl too, because you don't want to, you can't put clips in the middle. It's kind of, you're in that weird spot. You can hold it down while you sew it, but you don't want anything shifting. So we're going to take and we're going to put our strap there. And our strap here. Now you could wait, but my, as you can see, my air um, erasable pen is already trying to dissolve. We're going to top stitch this down. Just a back and forth, just a little back and forth, so that way it can, it can stay. And this is this is a uh, cotton, so it's not going to appropriate or anything. If you're doing it with vinyl, um, just make sure you go you back stitch on and off the the strap, so that way. all these threads it's the same color as the thread um the bag so it's pretty interesting right now so we we have done that part i'm gonna put the pattern piece to the side and we're going to now we're gonna make some marks i'm sorry i put the pattern piece aside and we need it we're gonna make some marks we're gonna place each strap onto the pattern piece. I actually really like this because um, sometimes when they give you measurements, I don't know if it's just me, I mess up. So we want the thicker, bulky, two, that the area that has two sides on the bottom, the one that only has, um, that is lighter on the top. And this is just the flat positioning. But we're gonna put marks on the strap so it helps to have everything positioned nice and taut. Okay, so we're going to draw the lines. I'm going to use my Tandy leather pen where we're going to stop sewing. Okay, and then we're going to put these on. You know what? I also sometimes draw, I'm just going to say I do like a little mark of where the, um, the, the metal tabs are going to be so that way I'm not I know that everything's going to line up I want everything to line up as nicely as possible so we're going to top stitch this in place I have so much stuff on my table it is exactly two inches in. So what I'm going to do, get my handy double, dandy double-sided tape and I'm going to put double-sided tape down just the center where we made those three-eighths of an inch mark because we're not going to even touch that with the um, with our sewing. You can also use glue. And I'm going to measure two inches in. Make sure everything lines up. I'm going to remove the double-sided tape. If it wants to come off. All right, so two inches in. I'm just going to Make sure raw edges meet up with the raw edges. And press that down. Measure it again, just to double check. I don't want it to not be even. 
you should see me. I'm one of those people that remeasure like a million times. You're like, Chanel, it's fine. Just go. <laughs> like, I can't. So we have one side down. And before I remove the other side, I want to stitch down this side. We're going to go down, across, and up. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. One eighth of an inch. See, you see where the bulk could come at because the straps are there? And this is going to go. So just be really cognizant about what material you're using and making sure that you don't have um, heavy interfacings in areas that there's not supposed to be. Okay. And just take your time. All right, so let's do this other side. Get my little ruler, line up the edge with a two inch mark. Right, and we're going to do the same thing go down one eighth of an inch on one side and come across and go and not unthread our <laughs> our needle that would be awesome And if your needle is a little gummed up at this point, you can take a little alcohol wipe or baby wipe and just wipe it down so that way it can help. If you have sewing aid, then you can use that as well. I might have to do it. I think my area is, my needle's all gummed up. It also, sometimes it's like the brand of double-sided tape. Like, I kid you not. <laughs> or could be just, I haven't had enough caffeine today. That could be it too. Okay. Let's make sure we backstitch. One eighth of an inch. And stop. Go down to the needle down position. Of it. And back stitch. Okay. So we have that all squared away. That was pretty easy, just following the lines that we made. And now we're going to, I'm going to just kind of clip these up because we're going to clip and pay, place the interior and exterior together using, we're going to go around like three eighths of an inch. So I'm using the wrong side of the canvas kind of looks plas plastic and you can easily scratch it. Um, the right side kind of looks like a woven. So I'm going to just clip this in place. Making sure raw edges meet raw edges.
Use as many or as few clips as you want. It's really your discretion. Everybody does their own thing. I sometimes have to use a lot more because I want, like, I want everything to line up. <laughs> I like to use some clips at the, the top where I know I'm about to begin to sew so I can just double make sure that everything holds in place. All right, so we're gonna go around this and we're gonna go at 3 eighths of an inch. Um, and I'm just going to measure 3 eighths of an inch again. I really should just make a mark on my um, machine. I've done it with like a permanent marker, but then it just rubs right off. Okay, let's see. Get my tails, have them to the back. Let's start. Back stitch well. I'm going to go back like three or four stitches. And just take your time. <laughs> I find like turning corners is like rolling dough, like dough, pizza dough, or cookie dough. Just You just gotta go with, find your rhythm, and everything will work out. Backstitch really well. Okay. Alright, um, we're going to trim. Oh, you know what? I was incorrect. We were supposed to stitch at one a half of an inch, not three eighths of an inch. Why don't you just redo that? <laughs> it was a joke. See? <laughs> half an inch, not three eighths. It's just going to be a second row of stitching. So if you accidentally did it, all you did was reinforce. Have you ever got the stitching where like you turn the back and you can see the stitches in the, um, like on the outside, like pulling, you just made a second row. So that way that didn't happen. See? Yay. All mistakes can be perfectly fine. <laughs> all right. We are going to, uh, trim this down to one fourth of an inch. I'm going to grab my little handy dandy um, pinking shears again. I prefer pinking shears because it helps spread out the bulk. If you accidentally, you know, uh, have your pinking shears go into the first row of stitching, you're fine. That's a three eighths of an inch. Just don't let it go into the half an inch. I have this thing where I like to like cut something in one big pill like an apple. It's super weird. <laughs> but it makes me happy. We're gonna put this right sides out. Here's these clips. Make sure you poke out all the corners. And then you could, if you have cotton, you can take it over to your iron and give it a nice press. If you don't, you can use a seam roller and press it out, or you can just finger press it. Whatever's easier for you. Whatever's convenient and what you have at your disposal. Area needs to be poked out just a little tap bit more. 
when I'm using a waterproof canvas and the, the, the interior, I mean the exterior is a little bit lighter, lightweight, it always wants to roll on itself to the heavier side. So I just keep pressing it until it wants to be light. Okay, we're now going to sew um, around at one eighth of an inch. Now you can clip if you wish to make sure that the interior, I mean, the interior does not poke through to the exterior or you can finger press it, whatever is easier for you. Back stitch. And just make sure you're breathing. That's the most important part of top stitching. And have fun. If something's becoming frustrated, it's really important to know when to walk away so you don't Hulk smash out <laughs> and you can do a try it again later. And this area needs to be poked out a little bit more. I'm just going to take my owl and just kind of gently go in between and make sure that that, that worked out. Now I'm going to continue top stitching. like singing like Dora we did it we did it yeah just move any excess okay remove the strings the thread and we're gonna get the back we're gonna put this aside temporarily isn't that pretty though look how nice that looks it's gonna be super cute oh my gosh I didn't even notice this look this is like, <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I love when there's like happy accidents. It's the best. Okay, so we're going to grab the back piece, our zipper tabs. And their piece J. And... Two back pieces of H, the longer pieces of H. Okay. And a nine inch zip. And zip her head. Okay, so we are going to put our zipper pull on. Sorry, the teeth are not exactly even. It was like one off. All right, that's perfect. We are going to grab our strap tabs and we're going to line them up I like to put a clip there and I'll do it again on this side, right sides together. We're going to sew this on at three eighths of an inch. And three eighths of an inch is between the, after the one fourth, but not before the half inch. Back stitch. Okay, I'm just going to pull this over to the other side. Make sure everything's lined up. So. All right, trim the threads. Then we're going to just pull the tabs over, kind of finger press it into place. And we're going to press both zipper tabs away from the zipper 
And we're going to top stitch that one eighth of an inch. I'm just going to bring this one over. Okay. What I like to do is I like to find my center. So I'm going to match zipper tab to zipper tab. And I'm going to draw. like a little mark and I'm going to put it in the Crayola washable marker because the air, air erasable one might disappear. So just like a little mark, not going in more one, than one fourth of an inch. So that way, you know, when you find your centers, everything's lined up the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to find my centers, little, little X. It helps tremendously just to find them. It just, it makes life a little bit easier. Oh, while I'm down here, I'm going to make a little V on the bottom of this too. You can put it a tiny leather pen or if it's cotton, put a pen in it. Whatever, whatever your method is, it's right. So we're going to base stitch one pocket H, the long one. Just remember, you have the long ones. And make sure your zipper is right. You want to base stitch. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that my zipper is going the right direction. You want your, I'm putting the zipper towards me, getting pulled to the right side. We're going to base that in at one eighth of an inch. Trim the threads and then we're going to sandwich this in with the exterior piece that's rounded. I'm using some clips to hold it in and we're going to go three eighths of an inch and we're going to be cognizant of the zipper pull. If you don't have a zipper foot on um, then just stop your um stop with the needle down and just maneuver the zipper rates of an inch See, we put it in the right so that way it zips to the left later. I'm going to finger press this down. Okay. And we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. That zipper right thing always, always, no matter what, I have to read it like twice because it's, you're so used to putting, installing the zipper right to the left hand side, but there's, there is no right or wrong way to put it in a zipper because, um, we have some ambidextric folks in my house and they're left, we have lefties in our house and they like when the zipper pull, um, they like when the zipper pull goes to the right. Right. 
So then we're going to take the other pocket piece H and we're going to line it up with the top. We're going to machine baste it, lining sides to the right sides of lining to the wrong side of zipper tape. And we're going to top stitch just at one eighth of an inch. We're going to then place this in the center, find our centers, and we're going to sew it together at three eighths of an inch. Hold on. Nope. We're, we're not going to sew it together. We're just got ahead of myself. We're going to grab our, um, back piece, our flap. We're going to find our center. This is where the part I told you gets a little bulky if you have too much, but I don't have a lot. I have a waterproof canvas and canvas and a little bit of, um, shape flex so the canvas doesn't stretch. So we're going to finer center that we drew with the brown marker and we're going to clip this in. Take your time with the clipping, take your time with the sewing. We're going to machine base this in at one fourth of an inch. I'm going to pull the zipper a little bit further down. No, I'm actually going to pull it further up. I apologize. And then, so that way I don't have to sew over it as much. I, I have a really big zipper pull. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, we're going to machine base that in at one fourth of an inch. If I'm getting closer to where I know I'm going to have to move a pole, I'm going to have my needle down and kind of just maneuver the zipper back onto the other side, realign everything, and we're basted. it. Okay. From here. I am going to use the upper back. I'm going to use my extender, make sure that I have my, my centers. We want to put this upper back piece at the widest point on the bottom. So we have another layer to go through. It's okay. This is why following the interfacing on this bag is um, very crucial because there's not a lot of it. And because she accommodated for all the, the bulk. So just, just go with the process. It's going to be okay. We're going to do three eighths of an inch. And just to make sure I go exactly three eighths of an inch, I'm going to put this back in. Okay. And then we're going to start. And I'm going to put the needle down. I'm going to move the zipper. Put the needle down. Um, my, I don't have a, my, um, the needle down feature. So that's why I say it all the time. <laughs> Make sure everything else is still aligned. That's why we based everything. <laughs> okay. 
this is the thickest part of the bag. After this, you, it's all a couple few layers and you're gonna be like, oh, this is pretty amazing. I'll be like, I, she did a fantastic job. So we are going to We're gonna have to top stitch this. It could be a little difficult because it's a lot of bulk, but you got this. So what you wanna do is you wanna press the upper back exterior away from the top stitching. Press the upper back away from the flap. And then we're gonna top stitch. I'm gonna move my not so my finger. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. There's so many times I have done this. I'm going to, okay, we're moving the exterior part. I mean, the top stitching, we're going to move it away from the flap. So have your flap. This is what we're going to top stitch. See, the seam allowance wants to go that way already. One eighth of an inch. It's not too bad. This is not a walking foot. This is a regular, just straight stitch machine. And it, it, I'm on a 9014 needle. It's not too bad. So look at that, look how beautiful that is. I was having some fun with the color palette. I wanted a, a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right, so once we have that part done, we are going to close up the zipper We're going to just go across and down and then across again. We're going to just lift this little part up. Just one fourth of an inch. We want to make sure that when we use the zipper feature, it doesn't just like, oh, my change in my money is inside my bag. Yay. <laughs> I've actually had that with a name brand um, where the lining um, the lining was not closed off and it wasn't open in the pocket, but like this one little small pocket and I had to like hand sew it closed and I was really upset because I got this as a gift. I got it as a birthday gift when I was like 19 and I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to be sewing this, <laughs> but luckily I knew how to sew. So, I mean, you know, hindsight's 2020 kind of thing. All right, and make sure you're going to have a little bit of a difference. You can trim that off if you want prior to sewing it. I just leave it there. Just, it, it, it's not going to affect it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go get the, um, you can fuse your foam, but again, I didn't have fusible foam. So I'm just going to like machine base this bad boy on. <laughs> and then I'll cut off the little extra tidbits. So I'm going to machine base this at one eighth of an inch all the way around. I'm going to go to a five stitch length. Again, uh, foam by Annie, the more you sew on it, the more it compresses. So I'm not really worried about, um, it being a little bit in my seam allowance because I can cut away. And I'm just moving pieces as I go. <laughs> and knocking things over. Your foam could be a little bit longer than your piece. It's okay. We can, we're going to trim that off. I always cut, do like a rough cut around it because when I do the exact amounts, I've had it many times where the piece is too small. And I'm like, man, I just wasted some good foam. And who wants to do that, you know? All right, so now I'm going to 
trim the excess foam and foam in those little little puppy ears the excess tab Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. All right. See? Oh, almost. I mean, this is the exterior. This is big steps. So we're going to then grab our bag bottom base. Get some purse seat. We're also going to grab our connectors. I had the other purse, but okay, there we go. And get the side connectors. And the base. All right. We are going to get our purse tabs. And I'm making sure that I have a side that was folded in. Because I have accidentally did it this way. And you can't see until like possibly the glue dissolves. So I'm going to measure one inch in. And then I'm going to grab some double-sided tape. Going to fold and we're going to basically be folding this in on itself. So I'm just going to grab a strip. It's just easier this way than cutting like small little pieces. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a little bit of strip, put it in the middle. Cause we're not going to be sewing in the middle because we're we already had our three eighths of an inch stitching on both sides i'm going to grab my connector oh yeah sure what connectors come on mm -hmm. the two rectangles i on my other bag i had o-rings and they're, it's really really pretty i just fold it in and i'm going to put a clip to keep everything in place Doing the same thing on this side, not this tri-glider. <laughs> I'm batting 1,000. I'm just putting it right underneath the one that one inch mark and just folding it over onto itself and then folding the counterpart to meet. And putting the clip. And we have that all squared away. We're going to get our side connectors, our side gusset pieces, piece E. And what I'm going to do is there on piece E, there is a line where you can start a connector. I'm just going to use this. All my tools are really squeaky. Um, use this incredibly squeaky um, chalk pencil and just go across this wipes off with just like a, any kind of brush and i'm going to find my center i'm just going to make a line so that way i know where to place these finding your centers is like the main point for everything it will help tremendously and why i'm here i'm just going to make some v's that over here too all right we're going to be doing a box around up and around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some more double-sided tape and 
you're like, you must have a never ending supply of this. <laughs> I feel like it's our best friend sometimes. I also like to use medical tape sometimes because it's like a light paper one and it can hold everything. You can sew over it. It makes life easier. So we're going to draw, just sew around a box. I like to position like that little line that I put up there. I just put, I put it in between the three eighths of the inch and I grab a, my ruler again. And I just kind of, I'm going to sew a one inch box and like and capture the other, the other side, but I'm not going to hit the hardware. So I'm just going to draw a line. See, there's that little line. I'm going to follow it. Put our little thing right there. All right. Now you could pull the thread to the back, but I like to um, backstitch just because I know this area gets a lot of wear and tear because this is where a crossbody strap is. I like to start from one side and I backstitch two or three stitches and then I'm going to, I'm hand cranking it so I can get right on that line. And I usually put the needle all the way down until I can feel it coming back up. That is my sweet spot where I don't get a skip stitch. <laughs> it would have helped if I would have did back to my 3.5. Ugh, Nova, Nova, Nova. down and a little bit up and then I'm going to grab an owl and just kind of poke inside the other side, underside. And I'm going to sew up. Down and it goes up. Go up this side and back stitch. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I like to so I like to when I go back around, I like to go back up to back stitch. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just my little method. And letting clips fly too. That's my method. And then stepping on them like the Legos. <laughs> okay. All right. We have our connectors on. They're looking super cute. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, what I like, what I like to do is I like to draw before I'm, we're going to put the purse feet on after, but what I like to do is draw where the holes need to be. For the purse feet prior to doing that because then I can't measure everything out right so I have my little marks now we're going to put we're going to match center to center and sew at three eighths of an inch back stitch and beginning and end and then we're going to Butterfly this seam open. You can use your finger. If you have a seam roller, you can use that. You can use double sided tape or you can hit it with the iron. I'm going to kind of do this. I call it like the pancake method. So I take it, I flip it and I held it down and then I toss it. In. <laughs> We're top sitting one eighth of an inch on both sides. So I'm going to go down one side and I'm going to hop over like two little stitches. And go down the other side. And 
we're going to repeat to this side. Okay, so we are going to sew down top stitch the other side. We're going to now put on purse feet. I'm using washers and then I'm putting electrical tape on the back of my washers so the purse feet are installed. All right. So our gusset is all done. We're almost there. We're going to do the final steps of the interior. Exterior. We're going to grab the front that has a pocket. We found our centers. We're going to clip. And I always like to clip the top to make sure that everything's nice and flush and it's even distribution around. And this gusset is like beautiful. Like it, it, uh, it comes together. There's no like real easing or any of that. You'll see you're going to be in love with this gusset because of the simple fact that there is like no real easing. This, because it's um, Decaville light and there's no foam. There's no trying to clip in to make the gusset fit. Just clip and go. Let's see. All right, so we're going to sew this around, go around this slowly. Um, the, you can clip around if it's a little tight, if you wish, but um, I don't think you really need it. I think the the this is one of the better um, gussets I've sewn in, in a while, and I love. I, I'm a I'm a person that likes to sew uh, clipping, so it could be a nice snug fit. But this it fits beautifully. We're gonna sew at three eighths of an inch, back stitch well at the beginning and end. I'm at a 3.5 stitch length. If you're working with vinyl, you can try to bump that up to a four if you wish. A uh, great thing about the t um, curves, go slow. But if you also have an owl or a stiletto, it can help tremendously. It can hold places where you don't necessarily want your finger to be. <laughs> Trust me, I know. For good measure, I don't know why, I always go over any area that has a seam, back stitch. I don't know why, I just do it. Maybe it's a silly superstition, or, but it works out. Okay, so we have one side done. I'm going to trim these threads. Make sure you're doing the same so that you don't get unnecessarily um, threads caught up. Because sometimes they get caught on the other side and it can be all kinds of not fun. We did the same thing. We found our centers. So that little V, that little V we're going to clip together. And we're just going to roll this aside, and we're just going to see, I'm not trimming the threads on this side. We're going to clip. And you have a little thickness where the where the where you sandwiched it in, but it's not a lot. It shouldn't be an issue. And I'm gonna clip at the top like I normally do. Just move this little bit of bulk on the side. And just ease around the corner.
use as many as many or a few clips as you want. There's some people that like me, I'm an over clipper, <laughs> but it helps me feel comfort. Like, so it makes me feel like, okay, I did some, it's not going to move. It's not going to, um, not align. But it's all about personal preference and what you like and not necessarily what other people do because everyone's sewing machine is a little bit different. Everyone's sewing style is a little bit different. Just remain to who you are and everything will just work out. Take your time, breathe. So I've, I bet somebody can probably sew up a, a whole gusset without clipping. I'm, I bet you bucks. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna flip it because there's a lot of there's a lot of going on with the flap and it could be a little bit more time consuming to clip this side, but it'll be worth it. If you're using all cotton, you can put pins in it. Those magic sewing pins are pretty amazing because you can sew over them. I like completely freaked out when I first did it. Like I was slowly like, okay, it's gonna break my needle, and it didn't, and I was truly amazed that it didn't. All right, so I'm going from this side. I'm obviously now moving this pin. It, it helps to put the um, the hardware down, flip it down, do whatever makes it easier for you. Okay, and we're gonna go three eighths of an inch. Back stitching pretty well. Like I'm going three or four um, back stitching forward and back. And take your time. And like I, I, over the seams, I just, I don't know why, I always backstitch. I'm curious, like, how many of you, when you're in bag of the month, sew all three bags? Cause I think it's pretty, it's a fun and exhilarating challenge to try a pattern that is outside of what I normally sew with and, you know, sew it up with pride, fabrics and choices and all that. It's pretty cool. I love the concept of bag of the month because I'm, I have met a lot of new designers because of it. Okay. And take your time. Breathe. If a area gets kind of misshapen, take your time. If the wrinkle is above the stitch, it won't show. The pucker shows if it's underneath the line of stitching. So take your time. And this area could be a little bit taxing because there's a little bit more you have to deal with the weight of the um the flap and that but it's fine just breathe and sew and it's all going to work out Okay, I'm going to flip the hardware down on this side just so that way it can be out of the way and I can snugly put this together. And just backstitch really well. All right. And what I'm going to do it now is that we're, we got this part all together. We're going to trim it down with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to get my pinking shears again. And I'm going to not 
cut into the part that we're going to have to match with the exterior. I mean the interior. I'm only going to do it on the, <laughs> if I can do it, I'm sorry. I'm only going to do it on the, the seam itself, especially the curved part. I like to pink. We're only going one fourth of an inch. If you, if you accidentally cut in your stitching, you can go one eighth of an inch around again and it won't, it's not that too bad, but if you can try not to do it, then that's, that, that's what you want. I like to not flip these so I can have them as flat as possible when I, I have the bags together and I'm, I'm making them one. It just makes my, I feel like it makes my life a little bit easier, but I think I need to sharpen my pinking shears. And I don't sharpen them myself. <laughs> I, I go to a person that sharpens them. You can go to like your local Joann's or if you have like a, a like a cuttery and knife stored sometimes that they, they can service your scissors um, or the original manufacturer. Don't like, I know there, there's some people like cut it with aluminum foil. And I'm like, I feel like it might nick and like have a nick put it in there. And then I don't know. I, and again, I absolutely could be wrong. I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn this inside, right sides out. We're just going to pull this out. All right, it's coming together. I'm just going to kind of just roll my seams. Now, the great thing about um, waterproof canvas on the side that looks like it's cotton, you can hit it with a little bit of steam from your iron and it can help prevent like wrinkles. But this water resistant canvas doesn't really wrinkle too bad. This is cute. This is going to be a cute bag. <laughs> you can't tell now. But I was dancing. <laughs> this is going to be a really cute bag. Oh my goodness. See, and then that's why I was saying, if you're watching this before you cut out the bag, this, this handle part, there's two options. This is a nine inch one. You can do 11. At first, uh, to be honest, I was like, nope, nine, nine inch. But then when I seen the longer hoops, I kept thinking I could put like, I'm, I'm fluffy, so it won't work on me. But if, if I, with 11 inch, you can fit right here and that'd be cute. Really cute, like a, a cute moment, fashion moment. <laughs> so we're going to now um, work on the interior. And I'm just finger pressing. I will finger press a bag all day. Like, let me just fix this. <laughs> so let me put this to the side. And we're going to work on the lining. We're going to make the slip pocket. So we need one of... Our, we're going to need our main lining piece and then I'm just going to go ahead for and grab two of these, the, all four of these. We're going to place two right sides together, have raw edges touching raw edges, and we are going to sew around the back. So what I like to do is like take one. I like drawing my seam allowance just in case I like cut wonky. I can like even it out with, with a drawing, just using a tanny leather pen. The pen itself, like the, is from Warmino, but the ink inside is, I, I got a replacement for tanny leather. I have this thing and I don't know if anyone else has it. My Tandy leather pens dry out fast in the winter. I have no 
I'm in Maryland, so it might be a cold thing, but I feel like I have to replace them more in the winter than I do in the summer. All right. We're going to pop a couple clips in here to make sure things don't get too shifty. All right. We're going to start on one side, back stitch. Stop in where I drew the line. I'm going to grab my pinking shears again. I like to go into the corner, um, getting close as I possibly can without hitting the stitches and hit the corners first. And then I'm just going to trim it to the one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I think I just cut my nail. <laughs> and I'm going to not trim the opening. So I'm going to just do like a V going into the stitches, like towards it and everything else I'm going to trim down to a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Not cutting into my stitches. Again, if you do, it's not the end of the world. Just go around it at one eighth of an inch all the way around and you'll be fine. It'll be one eighth of an inch smaller. No one's going to notice. No one will know. <laughs> Okay, and what I like to do is if this was um, woven or or you can lightly touch it with a iron on just the woven part, not the plastic, because if you do the plastic, it just ugh, it will smell and burn and you, then you have to clean your iron. I'm going to roll the seam roller. I've noticed if I take it, like try to open up the seam, prior to turning it it just kind of wants to roll I'm gonna flip this inside right sides out I can't, where did my little, <laughs> I'm all looking for my, um, my little turner thing so I can get these corners really well. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, you can get it even further to get a nice crisper, but I, I always get to that point where I feel like I'm going to poke through and I have poked through a lot. So we're going to top stitch one of the sides. You can do that one fourth or one eighth of an inch. Whatever you like your top tissue preference, and I know, you're already saying, wait, you got the side that was turned, but see how well it looks? It doesn't, it, I actually like it when it has like the area where it folds over because then it looks like it's purposeful. I know, I'm odd. <laughs> so we are going to 
find our centers. And then I'm just going to snip, snip. And we are going to place this one, we're gonna place this one and three fourths from the top of the edge. I'm going to trim these threads a little bit better. I have like foam everywhere. Okay, because I'm using waterproof canvas and this is in the center, I'm gonna pop a couple pins in to keep it center. You could put a line, a double-sided tape down the bottom and it will keep everything from not moving. But I against what, against what I've been told, I, I do pop a hole because for some reason the holes don't show. Have you ever just like ripped out like from a seam ripper from um, waterproof canvas? It It's more resilient than we th think it is. So I'm going to stitch one, two stitches on and I'm going to stitch one stitch off, come forward and right underneath this row of stitching that we made, I'm just going to go forward one, two, go back two, and then go one eighth of an inch all the way around. So you do one fourth of an inch. I have a tendency of doing one fourth of an inch just in case I like go off track. It happens, but if you do, you're at one fourth and everything's caught. So I'm gonna go all the way forward, go one stitch off, two stitches back, go in, one, two. Well, I did that fast. Lock those stitches in and go back up. Now you lock those stitches in. This has reinforcements of when you slip your cell phone or candy. I'm really for you to get candy. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, it's nice and reinforced. All right, so we're gonna work on our second pocket. Our second pocket is gonna be a zipper pocket. So what we're going to need is our one of our pieces and we're going to grab a pattern piece. The pattern piece H, which <laughs> mines have already seen better days. I'm going to fold it back to where it was and I'm going to put this in place. My pattern, I'm rough on my patterns pieces. I know. I apologize. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of finagle this a little bit. I'm going to draw my box. You can draw out the lines and measure them because there are measurements, but there also is a pattern piece that's there to help you. I'm gonna move that and I'm gonna connect the lines. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> that PD Harmon's stuck in my head now. <laughs> And then I'm just going to draw our cut lines. We are going to measure we're going to measure the piece pocket piece on the main one inch down. And then we're going to pin in place. Oh, it would help if I would have found my centers. I'm going to crease this and not lose this. And okay, and then I'm going to crease this to find my centers. And I'm going to measure one inch down. I'm going to pop a couple pins to keep everything centered as much as I can. I'm going to reduce my stitch length. I usually like to reduce my stitch length when I'm doing a zipper pocket because I can get a nice tighter, um, it, to make it a nice easy box. I'm going to remove my pen. Oh, 
Oh, I'm out of bobbin. Well, well let me change that real quick. <laughs> I do miss I do miss a domestic when it like warns you like danger will robs and you're almost out of bottom. Okay. I mean at least it happened now versus us top stitching the bag, so there's a plus. All right. That's why I also like the fact that in this pattern, um, I normally like to do my um, straps at the end because I feel like it's a victory. Um, but I kind of like the fact that she didn't have, uh oh, she didn't have, she had you do your straps all at once in the beginning. So, oh, it was, it was a, a nice little nest there. Sometimes my bobbin likes to do that before. Okay. Gonna have a nice little nest of threads when I'm done. Okay, uh, add it again. Two point. Okay, so we are, I sew with a, a 2.0 stitch length all the way around. It's nice and taut and I can get the corners a little bit easier. I had some nesting, but I fixed it. Sometimes if my bobbin's too full, I get a little bit of weird nesting action. And I'm going to get as close as I can to the stitches without cutting it into it. That takes time and sharp scissors. That's the best advice I can give you. Time and sharp scissors. And do not look into the camera when you're cutting the pocket and accidentally cut into the stitches. <laughs> All right. If you have, if you're at home and you're using cotton, you can definitely iron this, or you can kind of hit it with steam again, your discretion. Um, before, I find this makes it a little bit easier. I don't know why. Maybe because like it's kind of like you're folding it already into the position that it's going to be in. So I'm going to take this and turn it right side. Oh. And while I'm here, I'm just going to crease roll my seam. And then when I get it to the right side, I'm just going to do the same thing. Just letting it know this is the position we're going to be in. We're going to grab one of our nine inch, our other nine inch zipper. And then we are going to grab our zipper pull. I'm going to make, it's a little nickel silver flower. I love having decorative pulls. I'm going to kind of Singe the ends or melt better yet. I'm going to put oh before I open this, I usually like to do my zipper tape. I don't know why I like to do it before I put the zipper pull on. Um it's just personal preference. You can use one eighth of an inch or one fourth. Um Heck, I've used three eighths of the inch when I had it on hand and I couldn't find my, either one of them. <laughs> Whatever is easier for you and makes you comfortable for you, you know? Personal preferences, you always hear that. Okay, then I'm gonna grab my zipper pull. Feed the zipper in. 
push it down till I hear a click. And I just put my zipper pull in the middle. Okay. And just now I'm going to kind of adjust the zipper, I'm trying to get it its center as possible. So I focus mostly on the end pieces right here to make sure then the to make sure that the zippers are in the middle and then everything kind of just lines up. So with this style, we're going to sew all the way around, and you can pull your thread to the back, but I like to back stitch over the teeth because again, that's an area that most people have the zipper pocket open and they put things in and out like their wallets. So it's gonna it's a high stress area, so I go I will back stitch. And I'm still at a really small um, um, stitch length. If I was doing this with vinyl, I would be at a 3.5. But because this is kind of similar to a woven to me, um, I'm at a 2.5. And it's a, I know you're like, Shinova, All I always hear that you need a longer stitch length. And you're absolutely right. I just, for me, my testing and error for bags, I've noticed that when I talk to customers and they get repeat bags, I will, I ask them questions. And like, if someone says, Hey, I seen that little triangle thing poking out. It's, this means that they use the back of the pocket a lot and it's a high stress point. Or when I repair other bags that are not mine, um, I notice a lot of wear and tear around the zipper area. I'm just going to move my zipper out of the way. And continue. And I just like to do one stitch forward and one back. Then I'm going to now put my seam up, my uh, my stitch back to regular. And you can see it's like this. We're going to place this on the back. Now we need to fold this over so that way when we birth it, it'll be easier. So I, I personally do. I'm about, I am a double-sided tape queen. I like to take one-fourth of an inch double-sided tape, and you'll see. You're not really going to sew through it, but it does make a little bit of a difference when you're trying to fold these and keep them together. And I'll just draw a half an inch. going to hold it to that line. I know it's really tight and then I'm just going to seam roll it for good measure. And I'm going to do the same thing on the one that over here. I have a trash can. You keep seeing my hand going underneath. That's where my trash can is. Now I do admit that sometimes everything doesn't land in there but it's pretty good by now. We're going to put these pockets together. And we're going to sew going up, across, and down. We're going to backstitch really, really well on these areas because we're going to be using this for part of the birthing. So I am going to start, move some stuff around on this side. And I'm sewing a little underneath one fourth of an inch. I'm gonna back stitch tremendously right now. <laughs> I, I, I like to go one stitch off. And then I'm going to try to cut, I'm gonna veer this towards the V area. And I'm gonna back stitch a couple times on that. Because when we're pulling things through, I, we are forgetting about the tension that's going into this pocket area. Bring the 
this around. That little V, make sure that gets caught in there. Our backwards triangle. <laughs> Back stitching well. So you're not really stitching over the double side tape, but the double side tape acts like it's got pre like a nice good press that you would get with cotton. And it just helps when we're when we try to close it up, it'll be nice and clean. Okay. We are now going to get your 12 inch zipper. And on one side, I already completed it. We're going, you can hand sew this down. You're going to measure three fourths of an inch in, make a mark. And I have this mark right here. Then you're going to fold it onto itself. Then I grab apparently a really crooked pin and I'm going to put it through the layers and not my skin, hopefully again. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears, am I right? <laughs> um, I'm going to apparently rethread my machine because <laughs> I am just batting 1,000. If you hear water running, um, I work in the basement in the, the washroom where we do our laundry is like right next door. So sometimes you will hear tumbling and or the water draining from the wash machine. I apologize. Let's see. And I'm just going to do a couple stitches so that way it can stay in place. And then what I do is I trim the threads and then trim this so it's flush, not cutting into the zipper, just cutting the ends off. And then I melt the threads. And be careful with the fumes. Someone told me, and it's very true, that these there's, po there's polyurethane, there's plastic, and inhaling those fumes cannot be good for us. So try to have a fan or like burn it where it's melting not in your nasal passage i know that sounds weird <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit of measuring on the zipper pocket we're going to measure two and a half inches from both sides so you're going to grab your handy dandy ruler grab some chalk and get that we're going to do this with the other side as well, the other, as I drop my ruler. <laughs> All right. Two and a half. All right. We are going to lay the lining piece. I always like to start with a zipper pocket so I know my zippers are going in the right direction. We're gonna lay, take, separate these. It's okay, we're gonna be able to put it back. We're gonna lay the lining piece down and we're going to baste this first before we start grabbing more pieces. We're kind of going to veer off at the other two and a half line. So you're going to hold this and kind of just veer off a little bit. It helps if you have different color clips, because if you have red, you know, that could be a stop, um, you know, have green clips or, you know, you have a pin system like that too. Okay. So we're going to just like base this on at one fourth of an inch. It's not a lot to sew through, but so when you get to that area, just bear off. All right. Trim those threads. We're going to grab our two um, piece F for the re recess zipper. As you can see, I already have the centers marked. So I'm going to take the widest, the longest part because there's a, there's a shorter part and there's a wider part. It kind of bows out. So make sure that the widest part is connected to it. Have match your centers and just be cognizant of your tail. So when you're getting close to that, just pay attention that your um, zipper tail isn't like twisted. 
So we're going to sew this based at 3 eighths of an inch, and then we're going to do right sides together. I mean, based at 1 fourth of an inch, and then we're going to re we're going to put this part together at 3 eighths of an inch. And I just back stitch a little bit over where the, the end was just to make sure I got everything caught in. And when I get to the area that we have to veer off, I'm going to keep this as straight as possible at an angle and continue to sew. All right. So when we're done with that part, we're going to take this and we're going to understitch. If you're a garment maker, you're really familiar with this. By understitching, it makes the zipper um, stay more taut and upright. We're going to understitch this by one eighth of an inch. So understitching means that we're going to pull this and all the seam allowance is going to go towards the bottom of the bag. Right. And it's just a really nice clean finish. See how the seam allowance goes towards the pocket and underneath the bag. Perfect. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to make sure the right side of the zipper, it meets the, the right sides up on both the zipper and the lining. <laughs> make sure that everything is all aligned. I accidentally had my pocket going the other direction the other day. I was like, oh, no, the why do you do this yourself so i'm we're going to start with veering off and i know that could be a little bit more difficult because it's opposite of what we just did just kind of veer it like as most organically as you possibly can i know that sounds funny but if it's like at a, a wicked curve it's gonna it's gonna be noticeable <laughs> all right now we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to trim all these threads. Take the bottom, put the widest part to it. Connect those V's. See, they come in handy. So you always know your center. We're going to do that natural veering off. And we're going to bring this over and sew this at 3 eighths of an inch. Back stitching well at the beginning and end. Trim our threads. Take it and we're going to bring this forward so that the seam now is all going towards the bottom of the bag. We're going to understitch just by one eighth of an inch. Okay, so once we have that part all together, we're going to take our two completed bags and we're going to put them together. I like to clip the two right where like the two like where the um, two clips triangles are so that way I know there's no shifting. And then we're going to make sure that the tails are inward so you can just fold them out of the way. We are going to start at three eighths of an inch all the way down to the recess zipper panel. Then when we get to the recess zipper panel, we're gonna to go to one half, a half of an inch. So my best suggestion is to, I like to line up the folds first and sometimes that's like the only place I clip it. Cause we're gonna be, we're gonna be changing the seam allowance size once we do that. But I wanna make sure that these two pieces are aligned so that it's, it won't be not noticeable when we're, um we're birthing it. Like you don't want to have two different scenes. It, it can become noticeable for us as so it's not so much as for friends or caregivers or even selling bags, but you know, we always try to make the best things we possibly can. So we're going to do three eighths of an inch. And right when we get to off the panel, we're going to veer it to a half an inch. Just a nice, easy, breezy thing. Make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and end. 
And now we're going to do this to the other side. Three eighths of an inch. All the way till you get to the end of this panel. Then gear it to one half. Ah, well, I keep saying one half. A half an inch. Let me make sure I did not sew over the zipper tail. I do not. Okay. Okay. We're now going to not so you're like what's going on with the bottom we're not we're not sewing that shut just yet we're gonna grab our bag and we're going to put it in this lining so they're right sides together now you want the zipper it's your discretion if you want the zipper to close to the left or the right i personally like to have my zipper pocket against my bag so i will put that towards the back of the bag trying to you're going to be stuffing a lot of stuff in here <laughs> take your time it's a the flap is the thing because you're not used to having that there but it becomes easy Okay, and I'm going to move the flip the hardware down so you know it's out of your way. Okay. So I'm going to match my V's first. It's a nice snug fit, but it'll work out. And then I'm going to start easing around and just clipping and then I'm going to butterfly open any area that has a seam so that way it will be not bulky when we top stitch and there's a couple seams so you're just going to I like to finger press them open you can hit it with the iron if it's easier that way because we have a couple seams that go back to back there's like three open seams on each side. So I'm just clipping them. And I'm opening up the seams. I, it just makes your life easier. You can cut it down to like a one eighth of an inch, but when you're top stitching, you're going to have those little bulky areas that can cause like a skip stitch or something along those lines and that's not fun. Okay. So here we go. We're going to sew this three eighths of an inch all the way around. It's not a very big bag, so it's not a lot. Just so the areas that you have clipped, you just want to make sure they stay raw edges to raw edges. Make sure you try to keep the um, the seams that are butterfly open. Open. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> you can always clip inside the angle, like clip towards the seam, so that way it could be less bulky. This is a hot mess to always sew around, <laughs> but. Again, yeah, I have this thing. I never notice how much I sew over um, um, seam, like open seams or butterfly seams until I am constructing the bag together. It just, I don't know, it makes it lay flatter. Like I think that the extra back stitch is gonna be more security, I guess. Okay, so when you're done with this part, you're going to trim it down to one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Again, you see me busting out my pinking shears. <laughs> 
I, I'm, I think it's like one of my favorite tools to use. Sorry if it gets really weird camera angles. It's really uh, interesting because normally when I'm sewing the back, I, I like immediately put it towards my chest and use my <laughs> my body as some kind of tool to help with the bag. And I guess I don't notice until I'm filming how much I actually do it. Let me just cut that down to one fourth of an inch. We are now going to turn the bag and take down clips at the same time. I love this method because it's easier on your hands. If you have carpal tunnel, if you have arthritis, or you have, um, you know, hand injuries, this is, this is pretty key. I love the way she did this. I give it a nice little tug to make sure everything is lined up nice. And we are going to close this lining up. So here's the, the outside of the bag. I'm going to pull for my pocket. This is my pocket. I'm going to pull my pocket out first. Okay, now I'm going to grab the lining. It's easier when you don't have a million things on your table. <laughs> All right, so we are going to sew up this bottom and get these <laughs> extraness off my on my bot off my person. Okay, let's see. We're gonna sew this up at a half an inch, back stitching well at the beginning and end. Once you do a birth bag this way, I promise you, you will always want to do it because it just was easy to birth. Right, trim off the tails, and then we're going to box the corners. You can open up the seams, or you can have the seams go opposite directions. That's that's what I have a tendency of doing is doing opposite directions because it's the lining. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, opposite directions. And you, um, you, hold on, I forgot to trim this down. Trim this down to one fourth of an inch. It, it makes a difference, I promise you. Um, if your lining is gonna have that extra little bolt or bolt. Just pop a few clips in there. We're going to stitch this down at half an inch, back stitch well, and then we're just going to trim off this to one fourth of an inch. We're just gonna <laughs> knock over scissors. Just gonna tuck in the pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna for top stitching, I'm gonna do something that is interesting. 
Um, you, I like to turn my bags inside, right, inside out, lining inside out, so I can top stitch. If you don't have, um, if your domestic machine doesn't have a bed, this is one of the methods I like to do. Actually, I learned it from Lynn, who is the admin in bag of the month. She, I was like, I can never get the um, top stitching right from the exterior with the smaller bag, and she was like, just turn your bag inside out. And I was like, oh my god, that is genius. I am rolling the seams. Yes, there's a little bit more to turning inside and out, but it's it's worth it to me. I think it is to get that nice top stitching. I like the little hints of cork. Okay, so we're going to do some top stitching. And I'm going to top stitch before I put the zipper end on. So what I do is I'm going to just turn this inside out. Try to keep the clips on as much as possible. I'm really rough on my bag, so I have a tendency of not keeping them on. I'm just going to put this in, and then I'm just going to <laughs> look like I'm not I'm unbirthing there we go I'm just going to tuck the tuck this in you're like Shinova what are you doing <laughs> you'll see it just becomes easier to top stitch this way once I've learned it so I'm going from the inside so that way my bobbin could be in the lining and because I'm going from the lining side I can actually tug the lining down in areas that I haven't noticed okay Trim this. I like to always start in um, a seam and I do a little bit longer stitch I, I'll go like a four and make sure you keep moving your zipper tails out of the way so they don't get caught up in the top stitching. You can do one fourth of an inch or one eighth of an inch, whatever you're more comfortable with. You're, I know it's like, you're like, okay, we, we, we birthed it. We're now rebirthing it again. I promise you when you top stitch from the lining out, it just makes a huge difference. It looks really clean, crisp, and the cohesive. Now you can definitely do it from the outside out. And if you have a domestic machine or um, a free arm, you don't even have to do this part. But if you're on a flatbed like I am, or a flat machine that doesn't have arm, this is, this is the method that I like to do to get my top stitching in. If you have to stop, make sure you have the needle down. And just move and adjust as you go. Take your time and remember to breathe. And you totally got this. All right, I'm going to trim the threads. I could have went from the inside out. My bobbin tension is really good right now. Like, surprisingly good right now. <laughs> if you, I'm going to... Just birth it one more time. Poke my hands through. That's nice. Just roll out the seams. It's been through a lot with me. <laughs> so this bag is gonna be super cute. Okay, so we're gonna do the zipper and we need to put the zipper in, the zipper installed, and then we need to put a zipper in on it. Don't put the zipper in before you <laughs> you put the zipper. Ask me how I know this. I've done that so many times. So we're gonna grab the zipper. Make sure that they're aligned at the right side. 
I just make sure they're lined up and I push it down. Look at that. That is so nice. So what I like to do for my zipper ends, I need the screw. And the zipper in, and then <laughs> my handy daddy's um, double sided tape. Yeah. You can use glue for this. I just, I found out tape works out pretty good with it. So, and it wants to come out on my finger. I put um, tape right in the center, and then I fold over on one side. Then I do tape again in the center, and then I fold over on the other side. So it's like nice and clean finish. Now you could put glue inside your zipper head, but once the zipper is kind of shoved in there, it really doesn't go anywhere. Um, the screw will help keep it in place. I have glue all over my hand. I'm sorry. I was in between projects and getting kids. I was messing with some glue and I don't know. Glue likes to stay on me, <laughs> even though I washed my hands a million times. Okay, screw in that zipper. And we have our closure. This bag is almost done. <laughs> okay. So there is a different zipper tab that if you want to do, it's piece in. It's really cute. It kind of it looks like a T and you fold it in and it folds over on your zipper end. And it's very nice if you don't want to use a metal zipper tag. And it could be a nice feature because maybe you can put your initials or like, I could put it in for Nova or whatever, and that could be like a signature thing. I think the zipper tab I'm going to be using a lot. All right. So the option you can do for this, you can have um, where you cut slits in and the tails go underneath. But because I'm using woven, I'm not going to do that because it will fray. Instead, there are grommets that you can get to cut out that you can go through, or you can use these really handy dandy bridge bridges. They're really nice. You can get them at Emmeline bag. Um, I think they have them at Sally tomatoes too. Um, you can, I know that they have it at Brewingberry. There's a couple place places and you can put them right in the center and they come with all the hardware you need. So much plastic. I understand why, but man, so much plastic. And they're to me, I feel like they're pretty fun to install. Um, so what I do is I like grab, if I had my bigger scissors, I grab my scissors because I have a tendency of like, um, losing screws. So I put all the screws and they usually give you like five if you have a set of two, because in case one screw is like a little bit wonky. So you have your bars. So what I'm going to do is I still have the markings on my bag from where, um, I want the strap connector, so I'm going to draw a dot on either on both sides. I'm gonna mark that a little bit better. I have one dot here, I'm gonna draw another. I'm trying to draw them bigger so you can see. I'm using this as a template. And then I'm just going to Sorry, there's some nose blowers in my house right now. <laughs> I'm going to put this on, punch some holes. I know it's scary because you're like, I'm almost done with this bag, Shova. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. But we got a little bit of work to do and then we'll be done. I'm going to punch this hole again because it is not punched out. If you have a fun fabric like me and, um, move this too. If you have a fun fabric like me and the hole, you can't find the, the marker that you just made. After you punch the one hole, get the template again and you can just kind of retrace that hole. Make sure you don't punch it through your uh, strap. 
and I need to sharpen my um, hole punch, but I can get the cleanest hole as I can. We're going to repeat on the same side. Wow, that disappearing ink goes fast. <laughs> Take your time. Just make sure it's a nice clean hole. Um, because if the hole gets covered, it's gonna hard to put it's kind of hard to put the screws in. Like really hard. Okay. And this should be the last one as my screws are moving, even though my system for the scissors is holding up. Just cleaning out the holes to make sure that when the screw goes through, it has it's nice and clean. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my, <laughs> I had glue, but it probably flew off the table somewhere. Hold on. Let me grab this glue real quick. I have like glue everywhere. I am a glue queen. I, <laughs> I, I dub myself that because I, I think glue is such a very, very important part of bag making to make sure that things don't, um, fray and things stay I'm just carefully trying to make sure that as I'm going around these holes that it's not going to hit my strap so I'm going to just kind of clip these out of the way real quick I'm going to take one strap connector and work one at a time And then I'm going to take a screw, poke it through the hole. Do the same thing, thread the screw. I should have did this actually when I, um, before I flipped the pocket so you didn't have to see the back of this, but I'm, it's going to be, it'll work out. See, it'll be cute. <laughs> so you could do that before you put it in, but I, there wasn't a whole lot of material. So I knew I was going to do it as an option on the back and it's not a bad looking back. So we're going to find the bar template. <laughs> there it goes. I thread it through. Um, this is just one of the many ways you can do it. Uh, I like also the invisible thing. I like there, the people in our, the testing group is like, are so creative and so amazing. Um, I did want to try these strap connectors. There are different ones you can try. And screw this in. I um I think this is pretty cool. You also could rivet this. If you're like, I don't want to mess with hardware, you can just rivet it into place as well. This is super cute. Okay. So then from there we're going to install our lock. Um what I do is I kind of just, I kind of eyeball it and I measure, I fill the, the male part right here. 
So I'm going to grab my lock. I know turn locks can be really scary, but once you realize that you just need to cut a hole around it, it becomes a whole lot easier. We're going to use the female part to be a template. So we're going to unscrew. And we're going to center where we had the turn lock. And we're just going to draw the oval around the circle oval around the circle we're going to draw our pin around the circles and the oval then i just kind of like triangle it out and this is all that i need i know i need to cut out to make make it so i kind of pinch it and sharp scissors can't express this enough sharp sharp scissors i know this is scary i'm weirdly excited i don't know why <laughs> Just gonna cut around and take go little by little you can't add more once you cut so just cut a little at a time and then what I do it doesn't have to be perfect perfect I perfect <laughs> perfect we just are going to see if this fits and see a little see how I need to cut a little bit like one eighth of an inch around I'm going to do that right now you can draw or you can kind of eyeball it like I am you want to go past the screw so you can put the screws in but you don't want it to cover up the holes all right, I'm just gonna trim this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab some glue again, cause I don't, this is canvas and it can fray. So I'm going to put it around the little oval that I made. You can use fray check. I'm using um, fabric tack. And let's see, have um, whenever I'm working with glue, I always have baby wipes. And when they're on sale at Target, that's my favorite thing to do. So if you have glue on your hand, you can wipe it off so it doesn't go on your bag. Take this. We're going to. Screw in our screws. So yeah, the reason why I also did this is, I mean, we're going to see the back of this whole, this, uh, the turn lock anyway. So I was like, hey, Miles will make it look all industrial all the way through. Now there are some people that put, um, fab, like fabric tack or, uh, like fray check inside the, these screws. So that way they don't, um move i never had any of them move but um you could definitely do it the only reason why i say no let's say that you you sell bags and somebody's coming for repair if you have to get this out with glue oh my goodness oh <laughs> now um you can also take some zipper ends to pass them up these are from my handmade space I seen them on her website and I was like, ooh, I want to try this because they're like, they're nice and pointed. So I thought they look kind of very chic. So you would put your zipper in the same way you would screw them in. So I'm just going to place them in for right now and then I'm going to show you how we're going to And niggle these things in okay so that will be the zipper ends we're going to put the screws in but we are going to work on 
our adjustable strap real quick because we could put screws in that. Ooh, sorry. Hot mess over here. Hot mess. All right. So on this, you're going to grab your strap and you're going to measure, you're going to measure on one end. We're going to measure one inch in and two and a half. And that's where we're going to make our, our dots. So one inch in. to two and a half. So one, then two and a half. Then we're going to punch a hole. I really need to sharpen it because <laughs> that should have just punched through. Okay. And we're going to do the same on the other end. The reason why it's one inch above, so you put a strap in. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It just gives it a really nice look. So we're gonna go one, and then we're gonna bring it back to the beginning and go two inches in, two and a half inches, and we're going to punch holes. I like to pre-punch holes so that way when I put the rivets in, it's just like easy peasy. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm also going to grab some rivets. Some medium size. And then we're going to feed this through. And we're going to put a rivet. I, get, I have these rivets from Emmeline Bags, really great supplier. Her rivets are stellar. I haven't had an issue with it yet. I did one time, I was in a pinch, it was a weekend, and I needed to get rivets for a, um, a bag I was making, and I, got, I went and got some Amazon ones. <sighs> Let me tell you, those rivets were nothing but trouble. I mean, this is not really punched through. Nothing but trouble with those things. Um, it like the caps like indented in. So I don't know. I learned I learned about quality that day, <laughs> like nobody's business. Let's see if my chair goes. Okay, set the rivet. I have a cam. I don't have a cam step. I'm sorry. I have my my rivet set is from Mika Samargo. They're a small Etsy shop really great customer service so what we're going to do is with you want this side to be facing you and we're going to make sure our our strap is not twisted we're going to feed this through you're going to take the other end so you're, you can feed it all the way to the i notice it helps me if i feed it all the way to um where it's supposed to start then i could take the other end and go up. So I know the, the strap is not all twisted. I have it all untwisted and it just makes my life a little bit easier. And you can just nicely put it through. And you go on this side. You grab another rivet. Make sure you put the, the back of the rivet on. I'm looking for the rivet press and I need to, man, that I'm telling you, sharpen my, um, my uh, hole puncher is definitely on my list for tomorrow. Okay. Get my rubber press. Oops. And 
grabbing a different female in. And we're going to set our rivet. And that's it. You can choose to put ends on your your bag. You don't have to. Uh, you can also like maybe wrap, do like a fabric um, over it, or you can uh, edge paint it. Then you do the same thing on your straps. You can put the ends on it, or you can use edge paint. Um, let's see. This is a really great bag. You learned how to put on a twist lock, bridges. You have a recessed zipper. When you open, you have a nice zipper pocket and a slip pocket. On the back, you have another zipper pocket. And what I would recommend to do, because this bag, my bag has been through a lot, is, you know, roll out the seams. Um, if you're using, like, a uh, waterproof canvas or cotton, you could put a couple clips and leave it alone overnight and it's good to go. If you're using vinyl, just keep rolling with it. It, it, it will pop, everything will pop out. It's been through birthing and whatnot. But this is a fantastic bag that's all done. So you completed this beautiful, gorgeous bag. You made it. We did it. We finished February's bag of the month together. Grace is everything that it's supposed to be, elegant and chic. You have a lot of features on this bag and you're ready to go. It's the perfect everyday bag. I could see giving this bag away to a lot of people. I also could see this bag, like I have an idea for a Minecraft bag of this, but that's it. You have a lot of options in this bag. Um, again, this, this part comes in a nine inch or 11 inch. And just think about that. The bigger loop looks really cool. Same with the smaller. You have a lot of options. You can to do ends or no ends. There's the endless options and opportunities for this bag. So this is Grace. You just did a sew along with me, Nova's Knits. If you like this bag, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. It helps the, ch the channel out really tremendously. And um, if you want to see more bags, hit that subscribe button. Until the next time I see you, I hope everyone stays safe and happy sewing.